I'm a flame. She ain't told no lie, she love it when I catch my cadence. She gone off the deep end. Pull up every week, and I hate to let her down, but I made a fast life, so they never slowing me down. Heart rate jumping like you know, sleep out. How you switch up, you always help me down. Wonder why I turn into a cold of me now. It could be worse, right? I got where I'm at with I don't work, left balance. You tell me that it's love, but I'm knowing that it's madness. Squad when we got cut us for the same fabric. No, I really can't complain. Everything is straight. I've been on a wave. But everything I say turn into the real day. Tell them run it up. You know it ain't a thing. We made it out of sums with the words on the page. But everything is straight. I've been on a wave. But everything I'm saying turn into the real
Good evening all. What's going on? <laughs> the guessing game. <laughs> of course it's a guessing game, my friend. What, you think we know where it's going to go next? <laughs> oh, man. Twisted Turnings, what's good, man? I need to do that post for those two pens that you sent me, man. Unbelievable. I want to make it a nice post for you, bro. So everyone can recognize the work that you do. So don't worry, that's coming your way, my friend. Kevin, will I sign your charts? <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, quite an interesting day. Quite interesting. Someone said, what's a cigar moment? <laughs> yes, sir. It, forgive me for not being around guys i've had some things that i've needed to address um family matters some of you know some of you don't but we are where we are right now so for anybody new to the channel and to all my pattern watchers welcome to the traders reality show i normally say channel but i'm saying channel too many times <laughs> Guys, let's talk and have a conversation about Bitcoin. Now, I messed that one up. Let's start again. My name is Tino. Let's have a conversation. Yes. My days. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you are new to the channel and you don't know what I'm about to say or have any idea about what I'm talking about, welcome to the hardest, easiest way to make money. We challenge conventional wisdom and understanding of how people translate movement in the charts. Why? Because we talk about the business model. The business model is all you need to be aware of. Now, this is not no superficial conspiracy behind the idea of what really goes on in the marketplace. It's common knowledge. You are up against liquidity providers. You think that all these little candlesticks that are made up of millions and millions of pounds of orders are from retail traders kindly coming to the chart and putting in their bids in anticipation price to rise or price to fall. There can only be a buyer when there is a seller and there can only be a seller if there is a buyer. That dynamic itself is something you would, must try and understand when you come to this game. Principally, people believe that when price rises, it's because buyers are in control. You can't be further from the truth. Likewise, when price is dropping, they believe that sellers are in control. In order for you to sell, how on earth do you sell if there are no buyers present? See, that equilibrium itself in price, if you understand that basis, you will then understand how this game truly operates. My job, in essence, is to deliver somewhat an understanding in helping you understand how to exploit these moves that happen in the chart. Let's take this one, for example, in today's stream at 2 p.m. today. We were talking about the New York session and addressing why we needed to be aware of these zones in the chart. Well, before you knew it, look what they did. They brought price all the way back into the first pool of liquidity. Now they want to try and come back up. When they come back up from this point in the chart, they have one of two things to do. They're either going to test the 50 and pull away, or they're going to try and come up towards the 5 or the 13 EMA and pull away and come back down towards this next zone in the chart. We do have the weekend coming up, Friday. It is quite notorious for one of two things. It can either be a day that they consolidate price and prepare it for the weekend, or they make a run for profit. Is that profit to the downside or to the upside? Are we witnessing a pullback to the 50 EMA on the hourly in anticipation for price to rise further up? Because everyone is trading right now the golden cross. Look what's happened to those poor unfortunate souls. So many people took advantage of this cross. They thought that it was going to go to the upside. They brought price back down again. It's crazy, isn't it? The golden cross is right there. 50 crossing over the 200 EMA on the one hour time frame. When it's actually the 13 EMA crossing over the 50 EMA on the four hour time frame. Look at it. Four hour time frame, you've got the 13 EMA crossing over the 50 EMA. By principle, that would be a very strong thing. However, traders make their entries purely on that basis. They don't allow price to show true volatility or movement to the upside. If you were to base your information on the four hourly, there would be no clear indication that they were going higher. Why? Because this big candle right here was just a trap. 
they hit the high once, twice, they tried it the third time, okay? And they failed at that and they brought price back down again, but they've tested the 50 EMA and moved away. What is that saying to us? Is this the first test of the 50 EMA on the four hour time frame? Is this the start of a new cyclical pattern to the upside? Now, remember, guys, by the principle of the cycles themselves, if you are new to the stream, we understand that this is the pattern on a weekly basis that we try and find. OK, now this pattern can come in all shapes and sizes. They could spend a whole week trying to form this first part of the pattern and then they could spend the rest of the week or next week finalizing the rest of this pattern. OK, in Forex, principally, this pattern happens from Monday all the way through to Friday. Wednesday would be the midweek reversal. OK, but in cryptocurrency, they are always trading. So it's either Thursday is the midweek reversal. Now, guys, we are in essence coming or out of Thursday going into Friday. Sydney has just opened. We are not even in. We are beyond the halfway point of the week. We now have Friday. We've got Saturday. We've got Sunday. And then we're going to go into Monday. All right. What they do now up until Friday when all the markets close. Now, when I say the markets closed, I'm talking institutional traders, banks, systems, you know, the insurance funds, pools, you name it. They will be operating tomorrow at 9 a.m. because that's how it works. Banks open at 9 a.m. across the world. Some banks open sooner, but the general consensus is they open at 9 and they trade until 5 p.m. Money still goes round. Cryptocurrency still is exchanged. However, the liquidity is less. That's why we advise you. Be careful when you trade the weekends because it can be very volatile because there's not that much liquidity. All right. Do I still have your attention? They are not the Illuminati, please. They are businessmen. They are liquidity providers. It's the story that people attach to the market maker because they think, oh, these guys are designed to, you know, they're not, they don't have our best interests at heart. Of course they don't. You're coming into their playground, all right? When you come into their playground, you are, in essence, stepping on their territory. Now, how often do you succeed when you step into someone else's territory? You are a trespasser. However, if you operate like a ninja and you operate on the stealth basis, you can be fast in, fast out. And let's be frank, there's no amount of money that you would have that could actually affect the market maker. But the market maker will take every single penny. Because every order that is put into this marketplace makes up a bigger bulk of orders. Okay? If you think that your 10 cents that you have lost is only 10 cents to the market maker, it's 10 cents from probably a block. And that block has probably got $100 million in that block. You understand? <laughs> you know? It's not the Illuminati, man. This is a beautiful system. It is a beautiful, chaotic place to try and understand how you behave in the realm of uncertainty. This is why this marketplace is fair. People say it's fair from an economical standing point where you place an order, it's matched happy days. Nah, this is fair. Why? Because you are psychologically challenged. All right. The decision is on you, not the market. The market will still be the market and it will always be the market. And tomorrow there will always be a market. Tomorrow will there always be your capital. Tomorrow will you always have the trading psyche to come to a trade. Today you lose 10 grand. Tomorrow are you in the same frame of mind to actually continue trading? You see, it's the evolution of you as a person when you come to the chaotic realm of trading, the realm of uncertainty, which is going to, in essence, help you understand how you behave. And it's going to reflect whether or not you actually take a penny or two from this game. All right. So how do we make sense of all this madness in this chart? Well, let's break it down. 
Let's go into the one hour time frame, which is the basis of what we like to talk about. Bitcoin right now. From the stream earlier on today, ladies and gentlemen, we highlighted these zones because that's what we needed to be aware of. Where are the market makers likely to move price? These are vector candles. And for anybody new to the stream, the vector candles are principally a point in the chart where price has exchanged hands on volume above average. Now, when we say volume, we're talking about how frequent price changes in a certain area now these candlesticks aren't just simply candlesticks all right within this candlestick market makers are either going short and closing longs how on earth are you able to make sense of a candlestick that is telling you people are going long and people are going short well let's just have a look at what they do with that green vector candlestick how is the green vector important and why does it become a green vector candlestick because when they dropped price, they aggressively hit previous pools of liquidity, which were retail traders, liquidation points and stops because they just don't pay themselves. All right. When Bitcoin moves higher, for, for that matter, when any cryptocurrency is moving higher, the retail trader, a.k.a. the moon boy, understands that he's going to create a substantial amount of wealth in one single trade because he's the moon boy that's his job his job is to be irrational he loves the idea of being in a trade and it's going up and up and up and he never pays himself it's crazy isn't it how you can be in a profitable trade and you're thinking about what you could potentially do with that money yet you don't actually do anything with that money in order for you to go on and try and do what you initially wanted to do with the money do you get what i'm saying the money is there for you to take. Why on earth would you not pay yourself and keep your money exposed to the madness of the market? Witness what they've done right here. All right. The reason why they can move price like this is because they need to try and grab as much liquidity as they can for all their orders that they have been building to the upside. Market makers push price higher to get shorts filled at the highest possible point. And when we see these drops in the price... OK, it's the market maker attacking and making the retail trader pay for leaving his money on the table. That's how they move liquidity. So looking on the hard right of the chart, what do we see? We can see that they've now brought price back down to a certain zone. Some would deem this as a reset. OK, some would say that this is back into the previous consolidation zone on level a level two on the daily time frame. All right. But we need to understand that moves develop. Things have to develop. What they develop into will be presented at the end of the day on the daily chart or even on the four, four hourly. All right. So we can see a big W formation. They've moved price away and they've been trading nicely to the upside. Everyone's been optimistic about cryptocurrency in the last few days. No one really paying attention to this bad boy right here. OK, but we have now retraced back to the 50 and it looks like we are trying to hold this zone. Now, in order for us to accept that they are going to go higher, Bitcoin will need to trade above the 50 EMA on the hourly and the 5 and the 13 EMA will need to cross over and continue higher and show us the perfect behavior that Ethereum is very, very common and infamous for is this, this nice nice slide to the upside we like this behavior by ethereum because ethereum in my opinion is the best cryptocurrency coin to trade because it respects levels again look at her behavior at the 50 ema look at her behavior at the 3500 mark okay they came up and released the longs and the shorts above that zone they broke through the 3500 came back continued back up again all right They've now come back down to that point where they were able to build more longs at lower prices. And now this candle has moved sharply back up again. What they do next from this point is going to reveal as to whether or not they decide to come down lower. Or they continue higher and finalize the next zone in the chart, which is up here. All right, because they've already taken most of it. Look at that. Now Ethereum could even come back up towards the 3.8 zone. We've got some liquidity right there. All right. We have to highlight it. We have to make sure that we're aware of where they are likely to send price because that is where money is currently sat. 
That is where the market maker previously built a position, off the backs of the retail trader who believes price is going to go lower. Back again, the retail trader that got stopped out on this move to the upside has now gone in a short and he's hoping that they're all going to pull back. And naturally, they're just moving price higher and higher, hitting all the stops, making the retail trader step in again to go short, to solidify that, and then they reverse price back up again to take out the liquidations and the stops. Guys, there's nothing magical about this other than if you understand how the business operates, then you won't be surprised when they pull off big moves like this. 90% of the pattern watchers in this stream, when they saw this stuff behavior, they were already preparing themselves to get the retrace back up for the vectors. Okay? But I can imagine 90% of people witnessing this in the crypto space were dumping their bags because they got scared. All right? And when they're dumping their bags, people are believing it's a sell-off. They can only sell if someone buys. Who do you think buys those sell orders? Tell me which retail trader. I, I'm challenging this right now. If we are going to base that the sellers are in con, uh, the the sellers are in control of this drop, that tells me that when a retail trader goes short or tries to sell his Bitcoin, another retail trader is going to step in and buy. Don't chat. You know what I'm saying. The only person that's able to allow price to move so sharply to the downside is the market maker. Why do you think they stopped down here? Because what you're saying to me that whilst price is dropping and collapsing like this, you're saying to me that the retail trader had a change of heart. He was like, no, we don't really want to let price continue lower. Let's bring it back up again. Because the retail trader thinks he can understand how to move price and come back into certain zones. Because that's what the retail trader does. Please don't. Don't. I'm not having that. All right. Whales are retail traders. That's it. OK, they don't move markets. They just have a lot of money. What compromises a what makes a whale just someone that has a lot of Bitcoin? What makes a whale? Because if whales are the guys that buy fifteen hundred dollars, fifteen hundred Bitcoin, then I would deem the market maker as the ocean because they're buying the two, three million Bitcoin. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like in this, the sheer size of things. OK. I'm talking about value, transactions, okay? That's what you need to understand. Retail traders, there's retail traders and market makers. Retail traders are made up of the average Joe. We like to call him Steve and we like to call him Derek, okay? We're not going to talk about Jane because Jane has got this thing where she likes to dump on Bitcoin and bring it straight back up. Steve, we know what he's like when he dumps Bitcoin with his closing of a position, which is about 85 cents worth of Bitcoin. Be aware of Steve. Anyone in the stream that is new and you want to know about Steve, ask the pattern watchers who Steve is. OK. Exchanges are market makers, PP. They are. OK. There's no two ways about it. You are coming into this game, okay, to try and earn money because that's what it's for. You're not here because you like to look at charts. No, you are here because you want to try and extract money. So let me show you how you can understand that for anybody new. This is going to help you, okay? Box one, you have retail trader. Box two, you have the broker. Box three, you have the market maker, okay? Now we're going to mark this off as the retail trader right there. We're going to call him RT. That's the retail trader. In this zone right here, you've got the broker. All right. That's where the broker is. And then over here, you've got the market maker, MM. So let's help you guys who are new to the stream understand this game. When the retail trader comes to the chart, all right, he wants to buy some Bitcoin. All right. So he puts his order to the broker. The broker then takes that order and then fires it all the way across to the market maker. All right. The market maker then says, OK, thank you very much for that. Here, we will match your order. He sends it back to the broker and receives a commission for actually matching the liquidity. The broker then pumps this order straight back to the retail trader. And you guys would obviously understand that when you pay your limit or your market orders, you're going to pay a fee, especially on Binance. OK, now, because the market maker has supplied the liquidity for the broker to be able to charge the retail trader for the opening of the position. All right. Everybody, it's in a win win. 
The retail trader is hoping his position is going to increase in value. The broker is already winning because he's obviously received his fees from the retail trader. The market maker has received commission and he hasn't had no risk because he knows that his liquidity that he's provided to give the retail trader the order, 95% of the traders are going to lose. So he knows he's going to get it back at some point. Whilst he's initiating that transaction right there, ladies and gentlemen, the market maker is fulfilling thousands and millions and millions of orders at one time okay from the broker so you can imagine his commissions that he's building up but hold on a second you think he's only going to be there just providing liquidity of course he's going to create his own position so what does the market maker do when he gives you the order to the retail trader he's effectively giving you the opposite of what you've gone into for example when you go long the market maker is going short now, he can be in a losing position for longer than what you can be in a losing position. Why? Because you don't have infinite liquidity. He does, but he does have to realize a return because market makers have goals, they have targets, and they are incentivized across the whole board. Okay? Now, when the retail trader's position is in profit, okay, the retail trader's liquidity that has been matched by the market maker, all right, is now in a position for the retail trader to take the position that the market maker had set against him. So if he's in a $100 trade and it goes up to $200, the market maker has supplied $100 to the retail trader in a direction that is opposite for the retail trader. So when the retail trader goes long, the market maker goes short. So when the retail trader's position increases by $100, the, re the market maker's position decreases by $200. All right? Now, the smart thing to do is to close your trade when it's in profit because you'll be releasing that liquidity that the market maker has provided. Okay? However, what do retail traders do? They don't close their trades. They just let them ride out. They don't pay themselves. All right? So then this is what the market maker does. He adds more positions to the direction that the retail trader is anticipating. And the reason he adds more positions is because he knows that there's probably thousands of other traders doing exactly the same thing with the orders that the market maker has initially set for them. So by that principle, he then says, OK, ladies and gentlemen, we have now got price at the highs. We are going to keep this price in this zone and we're going to try and trap as much liquidity as we can in this area. And then what happens? News comes out. Everything is great. El Salvador is now making Bitcoin legal tender. Everyone go and buy £30 worth of Bitcoin to help the cause. Happy days. Then what happens, ladies and gentlemen? You see the following. You see this. That's exactly what happens. So all the while the market maker is in a loss and the retail trader is winning off the liquidity that he's provided. Because the retail trader doesn't pay himself, the market maker just makes everything move down and completely takes back all of that liquidity that he'd given out. And he's doubled up with it because the retail trader puts margin in there, tries to increase his liquidation point, and he just doesn't pay himself. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how the business operates, all right? You are up against the smartest machines out there that are designed to fulfill orders. It's an algorithm that works at such speeds of light. It fulfills orders back and forth. Why are you going to risk your own hard cash if you're not going to take any of the cash that you never knew you were going to make from the market? Ask yourself that question. You know? <sighs> Are you still in the room, ladies and gentlemen? Forgive me. The algorithm, the algorithm doesn't so much determine price. It's the orders that determine that. Okay, so in light of the price itself, 
right? It's wherever there is liquidity for the market maker to move price to. Price is irrelevant. Price is what they use to get you to buy. Why? Because people believe Bitcoin should be 50K. People believe Bitcoin should go to 100K. People believe, people believe. Who cares what people believe? Because one way or another, we're going to see the result of people's thinking in price. If people think that Bitcoin should go to 100K, it's irrelevant because people right now think Bitcoin should be at 47,600 because that's where the orders are being processed. Right. When you look at other platforms such as ExoCharts or anything else, OK, you can see hundreds and thousands of orders placed all over the place. Until price gets to that point, it's irrelevant. We can use it as a gauge to understand how price could move into that zone and what are the chances of price actually getting to that zone. But what you need to try and get into your mind is you're dealing with uncertainty. We will never know it will go to that point. The only thing that we have in our favor, ladies and gentlemen, is momentum. It's momentum. And this is the name of the game. You pay to play. If you were to ride this W formation, what would have been your entry point? You would have had plenty of time. First entry, second entry, third entry. Okay? You would have been able to ride that move all the way up there. Okay? It may not have been a long move, but you would have been able to realize a return on the one hour time frame. Why? Because they had moved away from the moving averages. Every time they came into the moving average at speed to try and break the 5 or the 13 EMA, before they could even do anything else, they came back up again. That's momentum for you. Look at the confluence of the 200 EMA and the 800 EMA in this zone. Perfect entry point. And you have to understand market structure, ladies and gentlemen. Look at where we've come from. We've dropped price. They don't want it to go down any lower when we are looking at it from this point of view. Okay? Ignore what's happening here. At this point in time, they had already come from the downside. They hit the lows one, two, three times. Stop, hunt, rise, drop. Another opportunity to build longs at lower prices. Do you want to see something very funny? Where was that happening beforehand? Because if you look back, right? XRP did exactly this same behavior over here. Have a look. Interesting, isn't it? XRP fully recovered their vector candle. And then they brought it back down again. All right. Bitcoin. On the 13th, did exactly the same. Okay. What's going on here? Ethereum did exactly the same. Do you understand what I'm trying to say here, ladies and gentlemen? Is that the fractional disparity between the coins? Why did Ethereum do it? They used news. But it did it. Bitcoin did exactly the same and so did Ethereum. Why is this same behavior happening? And you're saying to me that this game isn't manipulated. Nah, man. Sorry, guys. Been in it too long to try and disprove the idea of it being not manipulated and that it's a fair spot. No way. No way. And if you can't accept that it's manipulated, well, don't trade. All right? Do not trade if you can't accept it you want a free market um i'd probably say go to a fishmonger's and stand there and just shout out prices to the guy selling you the fish over the stand that's a fair market All right if he says three three haddock for a pound and you shout 110 or you shout 90 cents whatever if he's going to give it to you for 90 cents, that would be a fair transaction. That's a fair marketplace. This is not a fair marketplace, ladies and gentlemen. The sooner you come to understand that, the sooner you're not going to get caught up with emotions. You're not going to try and think, hold on a second, why have I missed out on a massive move to the upside? What have I done wrong? What have I done wrong? Well, it's not that you've done anything wrong. You can never know exactly what they're going to do next. Now, proficiency will allow you to see patterns repeat over and over again, which is why the hybrid system is about timing, repeatable patterns and notable candlesticks. If there's something that you take from this stream is you'll understand that these patterns that we see all the time repeat themselves and each stream is designed to help you understand when they repeat themselves. Do you know what? Mass adoption wouldn't fix this. You know why? It would make it more exciting. I'll tell you what, if that's what you're talking about, Sushi, right? The more people that come to this game, the more people that ch um, trade, 
okay people say if the market maker knew that you were doing this and showing people how to understand the marketplace all right would they try and stop you hell no they would never try and stop me why because if anything they would come to my door knocking on my door saying thank you very much tino for providing more liquidity for us to make more money why because not everyone sees the same pattern not everyone trades at the same time not everyone trades on the same time frame not everyone sees the same moving average not everyone do you get what i'm saying you know, more liquidity. <laughs> My wife. <laughs> this game is all about trapping. All right. It's all about trapping. Why do you see price make a move to the upside and then pull straight back down? Why? Why is it because it's part of the market hypothesis? No. It's because they've trapped enough liquidity to the upside to convince the retail trader price is going to continue higher. And if they allow price to continue higher, that means they will be obliged to allow the retail trader to realize a return. That's not what the market maker's about. He wants to make profit. So he convinces enough traders in the opposite direction. That way he gets the best fill and there's liquidity for him to realize a return on the move that he's been building and positioning his move for. Okay. Pavel, listen, go into if you type in indicators. Um yes, I do. If you type in indicators, it should actually appear. Here we go. No, that's not that one. That's the Patreon one. I think if someone where is it? Trading view indicators right there. There it is. It's right there. If you just scroll up in the chat, it will say Streamlabs, get the trading view indicators here. That should be how it works. Okay. There it is right there. So, where are we likely to expect Bitcoin? Where is it likely to go next? If that's the question that you are wondering. Well, we need to understand where we are. Okay. Right now, we are at the 50 EMA. And there's nothing else for us to do other than wait. Forget about where it could go in the future. By the principle of adoption, naturally, Bitcoin will rise, which is why it's just a joke when people say, yep, it's going to go to 100K. Yep, it's going to go to 200K. Yes, it's going to go to a million. All right. If people are going to start using it, naturally, it's going to rise. So where's your claim? It doesn't make sense. All right. It's like standing at the top of a hill, getting ready to ride down on your bike. And you're going to say to yourself, we're probably going to get a bit faster now. Of course, you're going to go faster, man. You're at a gradient. You're dropping. Naturally, you're going to be right, you know, increasing your speed. All right. And it's the same principle with Bitcoin. Bitcoin is progressively rising. These spikes that you see in price are just mini resets. If you want to understand the likely behavior of Bitcoin, look at the S&P 500. It has been rising nonstop. Actually, you know what? Let's go and have a look. All right. Just so you can understand it. SPY. Um, oh. Let's roll with that. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Bitcoin. Okay. This is the S&P. All right. It started in 1994. It rises. It pulls back. It rises. It pulls back. And then if you look closely, this is the monthly time frame. Every time it rises, it drops. Every time it rises, it pulls back. Rise, reset. Rise, subprime, not subprime mortgage crisis in that zone. Subprime mortgage crisis was over here, which you can see. Where is it? Right there. Subprime mortgage crisis of 2007, 2008. It's funny. Reset continuation to the upside reset up reset up we're expecting another reset guys we're expecting another pullback and then continuation up bitcoin's gonna do exactly the same thing its nature is to do so it has a utility it has a purpose look at ethereum my days ethereum is going to be making the numbers because that has a utility all right if you, under, on the, if you want to understand the true power of Ethereum, you're looking at the coins that that the that, Ethereum, that the blockchain is using. For example, Solano. 
it uses the Ethereum blockchain. Look where Ethereum is priced. All right. Now look at Solano. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Crypto does have a nature. It's designed to get people to use it. That's the nature of crypto. No different to the way the nature of fiat was endorsed. The nature of chip and pin. The idea of using a card as opposed to cash. Everyone has a nature. It's just getting people to do it. You know? Why do brokers start messing with your take profit orders once your win rate improves? The reason being is because the broker pays you. The broker pays you. It's the broker that pays you the money. When you're, when you, if you deposit 50 pounds into a broker, okay, you turn that 50 into 100, irrelevant. There's nothing for them. You turn that 100 into 1,000, still nothing for them. You turn that thousand into ten thousand they probably start paying attention okay you turn that ten thousand into a hundred thousand they know that at some point you're going to want to withdraw it it comes from their liquidity okay you turn that hundred thousand into a million they're going to be paying attention to your account and they're going to do their very best to try and throw your positions off by widening spreads okay not giving you the best feel all right there are brokers out there that do that. Even broker, I'm not even going to say, because you have to be careful. Okay? You have to be careful, especially non-regulated brokers. Be careful of the non-regulated brokers. I'm talking mainly of Forex right now. All right? That's what they do. That's the nature of the game. All right, then. Let's have a look at what's been going on across the board. Let's have a look at our altcoins. Try and establish exactly who's been winning and why. So here we go. AVAX, again, top spot. Happy days. Very good behavior by AVAX. Looks like it's forming the M. Do you remember earlier on today, guys, in the stream, what we were talking about? AVAX is likely to try and hit the highs. Um, what did we say it was? Did we say 70? It was coming up towards the 70 mark. Just narrowly missed it. There was momentum though, but now it's pulled straight back. What do we understand about blue vector candles? Notable volume starting to appear at the highs, but it's only starting to rise. That could mean at the same time, it's slowing down. Because if you notice the green vectors appearing here, they have interest to move price higher. All right. Colin, if you go to today's um, live stream earlier on today, I pretty much gave you one of the short-term targets for Bitcoin, okay? The stream earlier on today, the potential target point was this zone right here, and we were talking about it up here at the start of New York. So Bitcoin ended up in this first target point right there. Go and watch that stream to understand that, um, the breakdown of that, my friend, okay? Atom, coming up. Look at that. Atom's the one pulling away from the 50 EMA. All right. By principle, we have ourselves a W formation. Rise level one, rise level two. OK, this looks like it could be another level two. So we start from this point, come down, form a bigger level two, do another pattern down here, rise up. OK. It's two ways to translate that. OK. Hex is best in the crypto chart. Sheeb up 20%. Let's actually have a look at Sheep coin. Let's have a look at Sheeb. Oh, wow. What an interesting coin. It's not gone anywhere. Ugh. Man. I would have preferred all-time highs. It's always crazy, isn't it? How they always end up making the moves at pointless parts in the chart. It's up 20%. Where has it gone? It's not gone anywhere. And what's the point then? Why am I getting excited about this coin? Now that looks kind of promising. But it's not giving me anything. Why can't it go back up here? What's going on with this zone? I want this point in the chart, ladies and gentlemen. Not this. Do you see? That's how the retail trader comes to the chart. Sheeb's up 20%. Quickly go and get in by Sheeb. Then it pulls back. 
That's the manipulative process, ladies and gentlemen. You Google something or you see it posted somewhere. Sheeb is now up 20%. Don't miss out on this opportunity. Buy, 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 buy. The guy who doesn't understand what's going on just sees up 20%. That's a decent return. If I put a thousand pounds in, I make 200 bucks. Happy days. Let's get involved. That's the idea of it. You know? Oh, PC. I, I understand. That. I understand that. But I'm trying to get the point across that. You know, I'll tell you why Sheeb's on, man. All right, Sheeb is good. I like Sheeb. And if you remember the video that I'd done about Sheeb, all right, 12 hours later, they get listed on Binance and it flies 200%. What a brilliant video for you guys. It was the only coin that I spoke about. I didn't look at any altcoins. I've never done a video on altcoins and I just did one on Sheeb because they had the staking platform. That's what I was interested with Sheeb. And then she just flew to 800%, no, no, 200% that 12 hours later because it got listed on Binance. So that was the only time that we had interest for Sheep. Then since then, she kind of just moved back. But Sheep coin, you know, she's going to do numbers. Big coin to say that it's not been out that long. Yeah. So that's when you brought Sheep. <laughs> Oh, that is true. Coop the Grace. That is that is the that is the that is the bias of crypto. That is the true aspect of crypto. There is no one coin that will be king forever. They say they say Bitcoin is the king of cryptocurrency. No, it's not. It's just the fashionable coin. It's the ever you know entry level coin in my opinion. Let's be honest now. The first thing that people do is when you talk cryptocurrency, they say, well, what, what can I buy? And they say Bitcoin. When they realize that how much Bitcoin is, they're thinking, oh, my God, that's too expensive because they try and associate when you buy Bitcoin that you buy one Bitcoin. Well, one Bitcoin, my friend, is a handsome figure. OK, now to the average Joe, he's not going to want to buy that Bitcoin. Then he starts stepping into the altcoins and he thinks he's a multimillionaire because he brought 20 pounds worth of sheep and he's got millions of them. You see, this is what cryptocurrency does, which is why that people come to the idea of trading cryptocurrency because they think that, oh, OK, I'm just going to hold my coins. Now I'm going to trade crypto when it goes up. I'll sell it when it goes down. You know, I'll buy more of it or I'll buy more when it's rising. Do you understand, ladies and gentlemen? This game is not one to be taken lightly. You have to take it seriously because you will be crushed. If you don't care about the money you put into this, don't use it. Go and give it to charity. All right? Go and do something nice with the family. Don't blow 10 grand on a whim. All right? If you're going to come to this game of trading, at least give yourself the best possible chance to actually make something from it because the game is treacherous. All right. One minute you're up, the next minute you're down. And can you handle that moment of being down? Because everyone can handle the moment of being up or can they? Can they actually handle the idea of holding on to a massive profit? And then you get people coming in the stream, not because it's their fault. They just don't understand. Tino, Tino, I placed a trade and now I'm in profit. What do I do? Bruv, it, <laughs> the game itself is all about trying to achieve a profit. And you're sat there asking me, what should I do? Bruv, you've got a profit. Pay yourself, man. Where is your brain? Man. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I've been rambling on this evening, but let me just give you the key levels that you need to understand. Right now, we've got Bitcoin holding the 50 EMA on the one hour time frame. Be mindful. If this move is going to progress towards the downside, Friday is quite an interesting day tomorrow because they're either going to hold the zone or slowly drift down to these key zones in the chart. However, if they do decide to move higher, price will naturally close above the 5 and the 13 EMA and then will continue further. If they do decide to move up, wait for the retrace. Wait for this area right here. Because by principle, if they come down, form a W formation in this zone, come back up, wait for them to expand away from the moving averages. And then however long they decide to expand from the moving averages is irrelevant. If they stay above the moving average for 10 days straight, you wait. 
because if there is true intention with this move to the upside when they retrace they will smash straight back through it all right if you want me to remind you about that sort of behavior just come back to our best mate ethereum look at what she did back in the day all right look at what ethereum did i mean come on i started this stream in january all right i started streaming cryptocurrency in january and i've literally walked you through all of these moves okay helping you understand the rises and the retraces okay then look at this last move that they did look at how long ethereum was just holding the zone okay wait for the retrace it didn't happen didn't happen but when it happened at this point retail traders were like yes ethereum is now cheaper let's go long then look what happened they came back up you as the retail as the pattern watcher would have been waiting for them to pull back and i said the retrace on this move if it fails to go to the upside it will be a devastating drop well ladies and gentlemen that's exactly what had happened and it was a devastating drop look at it complete collapse by simply waiting for price to form the true intention because if they did favor to go higher they would have continued and exploded out of the zone but they had finished their move so they initiated the stop hunt low stop hunt rise drop retrace continuation to the downside all right ladies and gentlemen i want to thank you all this is my first night coming back to the streams so i'm going to get into the swing of things all right i will be streaming tomorrow evening just to bring you guys towards the end of the week and prep you guys for the weekend and what to expect next okay but guys if you are new to the channel be sure to like and subscribe all right the basis of this channel is to try and help you understand how this game works if you want to know more join the discord there's a gang of people in there that have been understanding this strategy and been doing a pretty good job with it okay and it's a great community mad community but unbelievable people everyone helps everyone don't get me wrong we get the guys who just throw around you know the big d's going on that they know this they know that but tell me where it's not the same anywhere else that's the name of the game welcome to discord all right but when when things are bad everyone sticks together in that community man so mad love and respect to all of you guys because it's you guys that make this community grow it's you guys that make the channel go to 46k which i'm thankful and god bless you all man you know mad respect to you all ladies and gentlemen thank you so much for passing through mad love and respect to you take care yourselves peace